Hi friends, it's Deanna here today and today we're working on a mash that I've had in my head for a while and I just wanted it to come true so I'm gonna go ahead and do it. I am mashing the everyday tea with the South Shore Rumper Bottoms to become one fabulous rumper. Now you say um, it's the neck wide enough for it to fit as a rumper. You know, you have to step out through the neck hole if you're wearing a rumper. Um, so what I did beforehand is I've already made this um, everyday tea. I've made one before, I've made many of them. And I made sure that I could essentially go through the neck hole of my top. There are um, different fabrics that will accommodate for this. I'm using a double brush poly and I have had no issues with taking it out through the neckline. Now, if you cannot do that with yours, if the stretch is not wide enough, then you will have to adjust the neckline for this, make it a wider neckline, neckline and um, do your neckband once again. So you'll have to measure and do your neckband. Um, but I'm just going with a regular size um, everyday tee because like I said, I'm using a fabric that has really good stretch and recovery. So it's not going to look all stretched out and um, it just works well. So let's go ahead and get started. Y'all, if this works out, it's going to be the easiest, easiest um, rumper we ever made. Let's cut the fabric out. All right, so I have here my everyday tea pattern. Um, this is just a full pattern. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna cut it cropped because I'm gonna make the rumper. I wanna obviously to go kind of higher at my waist. So what I'm gonna do is, this is kind of like the middle. This is where my sideways kind of goes in. You can measure if you want to um, and see where the hem hits and then measure up or measure from the armpit down and see how long you want it. I kind of am eyeballing it because this is kind of right here is like the waist. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to like the waist right here. Now if I have to cut it shorter, once I sew the top part first, I'm going to go ahead and try it on and trim it exactly where I want it. Um, so I want to go ahead and cut the front and the back the same length. So I'm just going to fold it right here and then where it starts kind of, see how it starts to open up back up? I don't need to go that far down. I'm going to go like right here where it's still going in because this is my, my top area. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut that up and then I'm going to do the same for the back. I should actually say I'm going to do the same for the front because this is actually the front one. That was the back. Okay, so then I'm going to lay it out. And so that they match, I could use the same one that I, the top, the back of it and kind of match up where my armpit, my arm area goes. So that way I know how far down I went and fold it up right at the same spot so that they match, the length matches. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut it out. And then I'm gonna cut the South Shore Rumper bottoms just exactly like the pattern calls for because they're going to be gathered at the waist. Um, so I'm gonna gather at the width of this waist right here whenever I go to sew it together. All right, so now I've got my fabric all cut out for my top and my bottoms. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create my top first. So I'm just grabbing, this is the front and here's the back. And we're gonna put them right sides together. You know the um, Everyday Tee is one of the easiest patterns to sew, it's super quick. Um, we're gonna go ahead and sew the top of the sleeves together. And then I'm gonna go ahead and sew that side seam already. So if you want to, sometimes um, when you're doing the sleeve, you in the bottom of the everyday tee, you want to go ahead and give it a memory hem, a memory fold, so that way when you go to um, hem it, it makes it a little bit easier. So you can go ahead and sew the shoulders and then come back and give it a memory fold at the end, which means fold your seam allowance, steam it. So then that way it's easier for hemming. So you can do that. But I'm going to go ahead and move on and sew those sides so I can do it all at the same time. Again, the right sides together at the sides. After I do that, we're gonna prep our bottoms as well. Just go ahead and do it all right now. What is this? This is my sash. We'll come to that later. All right, so I'm gonna grab one front and one back 
and I'm gonna match them up at the outer seam. Now, if you're doing pockets, you would go ahead and attach your pockets first. I'm not doing pockets. You know, I love pockets, but I also don't love pockets. Sometimes when I wear pockets with like a romper, especially made out of like a double brush poly or something, I do not like it when you can see my pocket like stretching out. Um, and I know that you could use different fabrics for that that will help it not to stretch out or whatever, but I like crossover purses and stuff like that. So I, I'm not bothering with doing pockets right now. If I change my mind, then I'll just open this side seam and add a pocket in there. But sometimes I'm just like, eh, let's just go for it. So I'm matching right sides together. This uh, bottoms, I got a front leg and a back leg. And how I know that, here I'm gonna show you. Let me pin this and I'll show you. How I know that is because if you, when you go to put it together, you'll see that your rise, they don't match. Oh, good thing I was gonna show you because I am attaching it the wrong way. This is the bottom of the leg. Look at the rice over here in the top. Whoa, good thing I went to show you all because that would have been very annoying. You know, sometimes when you sew and then you don't realize what you're doing and then after you do it, you're just like, why did I do that? Yeah, that would have been one of those moments where I would have been like, why in the world did I do that? Here's my rise. So I want to do the outer side that doesn't have the rise. All right, and then let's grab the other pant leg. Where is the rise? The rise is on that side, so that's not the one I want. Let's see this one. The rise is on this side, and let's make sure that they don't match. If they're the same, that means that they're both the front or both the back. We don't want both the fronts and both the backs. We want a front and a back. So as you can see, one goes higher than the other because the back goes a higher rise than the front. So that's what I want. I want a back and a front. And now I'm going to attach them at the long raw outer edge. Now I can go ahead and pin it. I'm gonna do the same thing for the other pant leg. All right, so the outer side is pinned together. You can sew that. And then you're gonna sew the inseam as well. So starting at that crotch, see the crotch right here? Again, make sure that they're not the same. See how one is longer than the other? Cause one is the front, one is the back. They don't match up because it's two legs. You wanna make sure that they're two different legs. I'm gonna go ahead and match these up. And this is one of the reasons why I love using clips because if you're using pins, you may not wanna pin both sides at the same time because the pins sometimes they fall off, they move out of the way, um, and then it's not as easy to sew the sides together. But with clips, um, they kinda hold on tight so you can do both things at the same time. That's what I like to do. I like to do both of them at the same time. And I'm gonna go ahead and sew my legs together and my top together. All right, so now we've got our top sewn. And you can go ahead and try it on and see if it's high enough or if you want it to lay higher and you can trim it a little bit if you want it to be higher or whatnot. Um, so there's my top. Now we're gonna put that aside. We're gonna grab our bottoms. We're gonna turn one pant leg right side out. And we're gonna fit it, oh, that's not the pant. We're gonna fit it right inside the other pant leg and we're gonna sew that crotch seam. Aren't these gonna be like super tropical? Um, romper, I think it'd be super cute. If it's too much of this fabric, which sometimes I'm wondering like, is gonna be too loud for me, then I might turn them into shorts or something, but we'll see. So I'm gonna go ahead and match that crotch seam right sides together. And I'm gonna go along the back right sides together, matching the rise right here, the crotch. And then we'll go all the way around the front matching right sides together, this raw edge. And then we'll go over and sew. So here's that crotch area. As you can see, we're gonna sew that together. 
I'm gonna grab also my neck band. I'm gonna go ahead and prep that so that's ready to go whenever um, we go to sew that on. I'm gonna fold it wrong sides together and give it a memory hem, a memory fold by steaming it. Dropped everything to the ground that was over on that side, of, that side of the rim. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and grab it and open it. And I'll fold it right sides together at that short raw edge. And I'm gonna sew that short raw edge together, right sides together. Right there. And then I'm gonna prep my band as well by doing the same thing, just grabbing one raw edge and sewing the two bands together. Cause you made two and they're gonna create one long one. I'm gonna sew that raw edge and we'll sew it later. All right, neck band is sewn, bottoms are sewn together. Now I'm gonna give you a little tip right here which I need to follow and I don't know if I will because I have, I'm gonna use my waistband but, okay, so as you know, the South Shore Rumper bottoms are, oh, I missed a spot, I'll have to go back to that. But as you know, the South Shore Rumper bottoms are wider than your waist, right? Um, so because the everyday tee is bigger at the waist, the South Shore Rumper is tight at the waist, but the everyday tee isn't. So what you can do to make it fit at the waist nicely instead of just being like one long loose thing and just kind of pulling it down, um, you can go ahead and add some clear elastic to the waist of your, uh, the bottom of your top or you can overlap them and add a casing for elastic so it will bring the waistband in. Um, I'm going to be using the sash and I think it's going to be fine for me like I just I don't love having elastic in the back so and, and the waist so what I might do if it's very loose and I don't like it I might put a little bit of uh, just regular elastic and encase it kind of on the sides or something to make it um, tighten a little bit but um, really the best way to do it is to put the clear elastic at the bottom and so that it cinches in at the waist right here so when you sew it to your pants, it doesn't get super, super droopy. Um, so I might go ahead and add that on um, on it. So, But what I'm gonna do first is obviously close up that hole right there and then I'm gonna go try on my top to make sure that it's hitting me where I want it to hit, like right at my waist. If it's too long, I'm gonna cut a little bit off. Um, remember, you have to have your seam allowance um, so that you can get it just perfectly right. After I do all that, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my bottoms and I'm gonna gather them the width of my top. So I'm gonna gather it the width of this top. That way I can attach them. See, it's not a whole lot that I gotta gather, just a little bit. So I'm gonna put in a long straight stitch all the way around, um, basting stitch, and just give it a little gather so that they gather up so that they'll fit nicely together. Or, honestly, you can just stretch out your bodice to fit the, the, the bottoms too because there really isn't, for this one, that much of a difference. All right, I tried it on and I'm excited. I think it's gonna be super cute. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and find my quarters of the bottom of my uh, bodice. That way I can match it up with the quarters, which are just the seams on my bottoms. And I'm gonna do the same for the neck so I can attach the neckline at the same time I'm attaching my bottoms. I'm gonna match those shoulder seams, go to the back, go to the front. And then you know those shoulder seams are not your quarter. So you gotta match your front and your back and go to the sides. So one side, find those and go to the other side. And then my neck band, I'm gonna fold it wrong sides together over that memory crease that we created earlier. And we're going to find our quarters on that too. I'm just trimming these um, serger tails. We'll go to the front and then mark it. I mark it with a little notch 
So I just take off just a tiny bit that will get eaten when you have your seam allowance. But in case my pins move, my clips move, anything like that, it's just always find it reassuring to have that little clip on there. <laughs> um, so I already went ahead and gathered my bottoms a little bit, the top of my bottoms. That way I can um, attach them to my top. But let's go ahead and match our neckline first. So you know that the lower part is my front. So I'm gonna attach the back to it. And look, it stretches so good. So it can go, I can make it go right over my whole body. Um, so it will work. But like I said, if it doesn't work, if you have a fabric that doesn't stretch enough or something like that, you can always make that neck neckline wider you'll just have to redo your neck band to also you know reflect that the wide um, the wideness of it so I am I'm clipping my quarters together because right sides together because then I'm gonna go ahead and sew that neck band on and at the same time that I sew my neck band on I am going to attach my bottoms we are almost done with this super quick and easy all right, so I'm gonna turn my bodice, I think, do I wanna turn my bodice? Yeah, right side out, right side out. I'm gonna attach my neckband, and then I'm gonna grab my bottoms, and I'm gonna turn them inside out because it's easier for me to do it this way. And I'm gonna fit my bodice. Make sure which one's your back and which one's your front. Again, the front has the, the back had the higher rise, and so this is my back so we want to match the back with the back right sides together so here it is that's my back and I'm gonna match that back with the back of my bodice where I marked that half right sides together pin and then the side seam to the side seam of the pant and then the front, tuck this in here and match the front. Again, I can do all this because I'm using clips and they don't really move. If you're using pins, you might wanna, you know, like do the neckband first and then come back and attach it or attach the pants to, the, uh, to it first and then come back and do the neck, whatever you want. So I'm going to put more pins on here so that way they might gathering of my bottoms are even. It's not a whole lot of gathers. It's not like you have to gather a whole bunch, but I did gather it a little bit. If you want to, a lot of times what I'll do is you can go ahead and sew it first with like a, a basting stitch and make sure that they fit correctly. Make sure that it fits exactly where you want it and the gathers are nice and everything fits just right before you sew it with a serger because it's easier to take off obviously a basting stitch than it is to take off a serging stitch. And also if you wanted to do a casing for elastic at the waistband, I would go ahead and sew it with a stretch stitch an inch away from the edge. So an inch in, just a straight stitch all the way around and then fold that, um, that uh, seam allowance up and top stitch it down, leaving a gap to insert your elastic. For if you want to look more into that, you're like, oh, that sounds good. I want to do that. Look into the um, um, off shoulder romper um, and the, or even the Brie Graceful dress pattern. Those have the casings at the waist. Um, and so that, that video will show you just exactly how to do that if you wanted to do that to this romper. Um, I might go ahead and actually sew it with a straight stitch. Um, and leave it a, a seam allowance just so I can try it on and see what it fits like. And if I'm like, er, then I can fix it, like I said. And then for my, you know what? Maybe I'll just go with the serger. I don't know. I'm so indecisive when it comes to that sort of stuff because I just kind of want to go for it. Sometimes it's not the best thing to do because then I get disappointed when it doesn't work. I had that little piece so for my sash, I'm folding it right sides together in half and I'm going to start at the top and go down and over and then I'm going to stop somewhere right here in the middle and leave a little gap, like a two inch gap to turn my waist, my band around and then steam it and then you'll close that gap later. That's my iron 
turning off. I'm done. I quit for the day. You didn't do nothing today. All you're done is neckband. All right, so let's go ahead and pin this and sew it and sew the neckband on, sew my bottoms together. Then we'll just have to hem and we'll be done. All right, my friends, we're almost done. I am turning this waistband around and then we just have to go back and close that gap that we left for turning it around. Okay, so you can steam it and close that little gap and your waistband is done. We're gonna grab our uh, romper. I'm super excited about it. I hope it turns out as great as it did in my mind. Let me know if you're gonna try this. Would you ever think about this one? Or you're like, that sounds kind of weird. <laughs> I'm gonna steam my neckline and then I'm going to go ahead and steam my um, hems because we're gonna hem and then we'll be done. I'm gonna be using my, uh, oh, I forgot my iron had turned off, so I'm gonna let it warm up. I'm gonna be using my cover stitch to hem. You can use any kind of stretch stitch on your sewing machine to hem. I've even, you can even use a triple straight stitch on it and um, we're gonna hem the bottoms as well. And then we'll be done. This beautiful fabric is from Olga's Closet. That's where I got this. It's a double brush poly. So I'm excited because double brush poly has such great stretch that I think it'll be great for this neckline to stretch out and let me in. So I'm gonna go ahead and hem and we'll be done. All right, and just like that, our quick and easy lounging romper is done. I will tell you one thing, I did make the legs a little bit wider at the bottom because I wanted it to be like a flowy thing. So what I did is when I went down the sides, instead of going tapered in a little bit, I just went straight down uh, because I wanted it to be a little bit wider. So if you see it looking a little bit wider than that regular South Shore romper in my pictures, that will be why. But I am super excited about it. I can't wait to put it on, take some pictures and, sh and show you. I hope you enjoyed this sewing tutorial. Please let me know if you have any questions, comments, like, share, subscribe if you haven't so that you can never miss any of our videos. Uh, please come find us on Facebook and Instagram so you can see what everybody's making and you can be inspired and you can inspire others by posting your mix. Um, also, let me know below what other mashes you want to see. What patterns would you love to see mashed up? Okay, so I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all next time. Bye!